Good morning. Um, today, let's start off with a quick video just to see how groups work together. How was that for a beginning? Notice how the leader of the ants at the very end just jumped in and helped instead of just watching everybody get sucked up. I thought that was pretty cool. So today we're going to talk about groups. And one of the things I ask is, would you rather work by yourself or in groups if you're in a face-to-face -face classroom? I would say that you're pretty good by yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't be online. Um, some of the online classes we're in do do group work, but I like the individual approach now. And that's what we're doing this semester. So. To get started, a group is basically anything more than two people, and you have to have a relationship to bring yourself together. There's a lot of different um, types of groups we'll talk about in a second, but when you're together, you have a purpose. That purpose could be friendship, and that's way okay. You have an identity like a group of friends, um, those girls or all those guys, but usually you have like a... Um, a type like jocks or cheerleaders, um, a social group or a, a slang, something like that, of who they are. So, and each person could work interdependently. We're not um, stuck to group norms. You can go out on yourself and have be members of other groups as well. Multi grouped people. Different places you could have groups. Of course, the bottom one, the problem solving group, would be something you do at work or here in school. Couple different ways that um, the groups model forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Let's talk about each one of them. Um, once you get in a group, you decide who's going to be in charge and what the purpose is. They're building a new subdivision in my neighborhood that's going to add like 100 houses. It's a high density. And we got together as a bunch of neighbors to discuss this. And we're going to go to city council and raise a bunch of heck. But there was a guy up there in charge of the group, and he was kind of um, not comfortable. And as everybody was there, there was a bunch of people raising their hand to complain, and I couldn't take any more, and I stood up, and I raised my hand and said, I need to interject here. And I took charge of the group and made sure we defined what their goals were. We weren't there to complain. We were there to serve a purpose. So um, we decided what roles. I got elected to be the leader because I couldn't put up with it. We dealt with the conflicts because if people just wanted to be there complaining, we worked it out. We just agreed with what was going to happen with um, who is going to take charge of which pieces, who's going to talk at city council, who's going to take pictures, who's going to get petitions signed, and there would be a leader for each one of those subgroups and things work together. And we established that if they wanted to complain, that could happen after the meeting. But for that hour we were together, we were there to be productive. So we had a normalcy of who raises their hands, who gets a turn to talk, and that everybody has to do part of the job. So far, we're performing pretty darn good. People are doing what they're supposed to do and reporting back and things are well. But eventually, if the housing development is allowed to be built or not, we're going to adjourn and it will be done. We'll have no um, ritual termination. Will this all go our separate ways because we're people from the neighborhood. My cross the street neighbors there and Harry and I are pretty good friends. But there's no adjourning like there is maybe at the end of a team that wants a big championship and they have a party or something like that. That's not our group. So talking about the specific characteristics of groups, and you know I'm going fast so this uploads easier, but you can come back and watch the PowerPoints and the PowerPoints are also loaded um, right next to this lecture. So there's um, when the formal interactions, you've been in classes when there's 20 or 25 people, then everybody stands up and says their name and where they came from and their major and stuff like that. Um, whenever you're in smaller groups, you just say, hey, what's up? And that's enough. So in a larger group, there's usually two or three people that take over, and then you can kind of sit in the back if that's what you want to do. Um, you don't get to know people as well as you otherwise would, and it always takes longer more time consuming because more people need to talk. It's harder to come to a consensus when there's a lot of people. There are also cliques where people hang out together. We all have seen cliques in different places in our life that are subgroups of a larger group. And there's always a clique or a couple of people that always complain, that counter coalition. Um, and they are the 
opposing voice. So, excuse me. And social ostracism is whenever we kind of push some people aside. Um, it could be that group of counter coalitions. It could be just somebody that isn't socially acceptable, but we don't listen to them and we kind of discount they're there, which is not the right thing to do. Social loafing, I think we've all done that. We've been with our family at Thanksgiving dinner and we just like be lazy and we don't want to help clean up. And it, it hurts the whole group, but we all do it. You know, it's not the right thing to do, but we all do it. And online groups, and I have um, classes just like ours, and when we have to do discussion boards, there's some people that socially loaf and don't do as much work. It makes it harder for the other people to reply to the discussion board too. And yeah, I'm looking at you, you social loafer. To reduce social lo loafing, you have uh, clear objectives and performance goals. We have objectives of how many times you're supposed to po post and the performance goals of how many people are supposed to do it. And there is accountability. The problem, there's accountability to me, not to each other. You can socially loaf and you have none of this stay in contact. And the team identities is something very generic. So you don't have that really big um, raw, raw team. Yeah, raw, raw team, like a baseball team or a football team. So people that are against groups, anti-group roles, uh, people that are destructive with communication, people that never want to answer the question but always turn the attention either to themselves or to another problem. When we were at our group for our neighborhood the other night, there were people that said, well, what about my house or I'm living here as, a pro, pro, as opposed to the group objective. And there's always that one person, recognition seekers, always wants to tell a bigger story, the toppers, the one-uppers. Tangent, there's a lot of those and you know those peoples. You might be one of those peoples and those people that are always just saying the wrong thing, socially... Um, not aware of the situation. In every group, there's an alpha who takes over, who's who's the leader. And there's always somebody that's like their henchman or right next to them that boosts up their ego, that always talks to them, kind of the quiet one that plays off of it. And that works. If you have a third person in a group, they're always the third wheel. And they kind of like try to fit in and stuff like that. And it's hard for them too. And they're always butt of the joke and stuff like that. That third person is never really fits in. But if you have a group of four, you get Alpha and support and Alpha Junior and support. But they all work well together. Group dynamics are really pretty cool. Um, if you have more power because of attraction bias or because it's your car, those things could happen. Resources like a car and a gasoline, something like that. Um, and if you come in as status, that status could be attraction. It could be money. It could be that you were appointed the leader by whoever the major group is. Cohesion when you all come together. Um, when you have group climate, people are going to work better together. People aren't going to be intimidated to come up and say something like that. Um, if you guys saw each other's discussion board groups, you'd see the ones that worked really well and that they take pride in that. And there's more participation than just the required for a post. Normals are what we're doing in our social group here at the neighborhood and what our normal is everybody has to get two sheets of signatures of on their petition seat, sheet. Those are that's the normal accepted behavior. So and we clearly define that. But just this afternoon, I'm going to send an email out and remind everybody that if you haven't started yet, you're behind the eight ball and you need to get going. So our contingency plan is the neighborhood gets built. And I don't like that backup plan. That's one reason why I'm going to stay active in this group and motivate people. They're all cultural factors. Remember we talked about individualists and collectivist cultures, gender and sex. Some cultures are very quiet and timid. And those aren't the people I think are going to go door to door and get signatures. They won't make a difference. Well, they won't make as big a difference. They have other assignments that they're going to do really well in. Um, some people have that apprehension because of steam or status that we just talked about. There it is. We're just about done. 18 of 19 slides. That's what I was looking for. I wasn't spacing off. So some people are assertive, what we just talked about, and they take dominance. 
and they want their personal goals to be the goal of the group. When people are real assertive or real power hungry, that's what happens and the group just doesn't function well. And some people are just argumentative. I sometimes make the joke here like the, um, my small group of ex-wives, they're just argumentative, but that's a very sexist joke and I apologize. So, But people are going to have objections and they're going to be problems in, in groups, but you just need to move through it and have good communication skills. And that's what we do here. We're learning good communication skills. Go back and review these slides. And if you have any question about any terminology that you can't find in your book, please email me. We'll work it out. Thank you for listening and hope all is well.